This video was actually published a couple of weeks ago, but there was an error in one of the illustrations. And unfortunately with YouTube, you can't correct an existing video, so I've had to re-upload it. So here we go. The most important scale you can learn, the major scale. In this video, we're going to do the one octave major scale, the two octave major scale, an alternative way of playing the two octave scale, and finally a little bit of theory. However, we won't do much theory as this lesson is really how to play the scale. And by doing the one octave, the two octave, and the alternative way of playing it, it should appeal to most players. If you're just learning the guitar, then you just need to learn the one octave major scale. However, once you've mastered that, you can move on to the two octave major scale, which is really just an extension of the one octave one. And finally, if you're at the point where you're trying to speed up your scales and speed up your playing for solos and things, then the alternative version is useful. But I recommend that every guitarist of every level should watch the theory part, as there's important information there that everyone should know. Right, let's start the lesson. How to play the one octave major scale. In this lesson, we'll learn the one octave G major scale. And it's called G major because it starts on G. And in fact, it also ends on G. Now, let's have a look at how you play this scale. And if you can, have your guitar on your lap at the same time as watching this video so you can try and play along. And to make it easier to follow, here on the screen is the scale map, the tablature, and also which finger to use to play the notes, because it's important to use the correct fingers. OK, here we go. Play the third fret of the bottom E string with the second finger. Play the fifth fret of the bottom E string with the fourth finger. Play the second fret of the A string with the first finger. Then play the third fret of the A string with the second finger. Play the fifth fret of the A string with the fourth finger. Now play the second fret of the D string with the first finger. Now play the fourth fret of the D string with the third finger. And finally play the fifth fret of the D string with the fourth finger. Here that is again, but this time I'll show my hand on the guitar. Play the third fret of the bottom E string with the second finger. Play the fifth fret of the bottom E string with the fourth finger. Play the second fret of the A string with the first finger. Then play the third fret of the A string with the second finger. Play the fifth fret of the A string with the fourth finger. Now play the second fret of the D string with the first finger. Now play the fourth fret of the D string with the third finger. And finally play the fifth fret of the D string with the fourth finger. Here that is again with metronome beats at 60 beats per minute. I'll also go up the scale and back down again. If this scale is new to you and you're just learning, you might need to go away and practice before attempting this. You'll hear two bars or eight beats before I start playing. And here that is played again at 100 beats per minute.
If you're new to this skill, you might need to watch this first bit of the video a couple of times before you get it. And you'll also need to go away and practice for a while before coming back and continuing through this video. However, be warned, don't copy my finger style exactly. I'm moving my fingers out of the way so you can see clearly where my fingers are. However, it's a better way to play and more practical if you leave the fingers hovering just above the frets. Obviously, if I did this whilst I was filming, you wouldn't be able to see which fingers were touching the frets. If you think you're ready, let's move on to the next major scale. How to play the two octave major scale. The two octave major scale is really just an extension of the first scale you've done. However, this time we'll learn it in a different place on the guitar, so it'll be a C major two octave scale. And as with the G major scale, what gives this scale its name is the note you start on, and also the note you finish on. And the reason we're learning this in the C major position is really just so you have more experience on the neck of the guitar. Because on the G, the frets are further apart, whereas on the C, frets are closer together. However, you can play the scale in the G position if you want to, and I'll explain that in more depth at the end of this video. So, here's how to play the two octave C major scale. Play the eighth fret of the bottom E string with your second finger. Then play the 10th fret of the bottom E string with your 4th finger. Now play the 7th fret of the A string with your 1st finger. Now play the 8th fret of the A string with your 2nd finger. Now play the 10th fret of the A string with your 4th finger. Now play the 7th fret of the D string with your first finger. Now play the ninth fret of the D string with your third finger. Now play the tenth fret of the D string with your fourth finger. Now play the seventh fret of the G string with your first finger. Now play the ninth fret of the G string with your third finger. Now play the 10th fret of the G string with your 4th finger. Now play the 8th fret of the B string with your 2nd finger. Now play the 10th fret of the B string with your 4th finger. Play the 7th fret of the top E string with your 1st finger. Finally, play the 8th fret of the top E string with your 2nd finger. Right, here that is again, but this time I'll show my hand on the guitar. Play the 8th fret of the bottom E string with your 2nd finger. Then play the 10th fret of the bottom E string with your 4th finger. Now play the 7th fret of the A string with your 1st finger. Now play the 8th fret of the A string with your 2nd finger. Now play the 10th fret of the A string with your 4th finger. Now play the 7th fret of the D string with your 1st finger. Now play the 9th fret of the D string with your 3rd finger. Now play the 10th fret of the D string with your 4th finger. Now play the 7th fret of the G string with your first finger. Now play the ninth fret of the G string with your third finger. Now play the tenth fret of the G string with your fourth finger. Now play the eighth fret of the B string with your second finger. Now play the tenth fret of the B string with your fourth finger. Play the 7th fret of the top E string with your 1st finger. Finally, play the 8th fret 
of the top E string with your second finger. And here that is being played with a metronome beat at 80 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. And finally, here that is again at 100 beats per minute with a two bar or eight beat introduction. Let's move on to the next lesson. Here's how to play the alternative fingering for the two octave C major scale. Now, there's two reasons I've included this particular scale in this lesson. One is because it's really good for your fingers as a stretch exercise. And two, because this scale is really useful to know if you're at the stage where you're trying to speed up and play guitar solos. Because this scale's broken into groups of three, or you're playing three notes on each string, it's easier to play this scale quickly and uniformly. Whereas with the previous scale, on some strings you're playing two notes, on other strings you're playing three, so it's very difficult to get that one to sound uniform. Right, here's how to play it. Play the 8th fret of the bottom E string with the 1st finger. Play the 10th fret of the bottom E string with the 3rd finger. Play the 12th fret of the bottom E string with the 4th finger. Play the 8th fret of the A string with the 1st finger. Play the 10th fret of the A string with the 3rd finger. Play the 12th fret of the A string with the 4th finger. Play the 9th fret of the D string with the 1st finger. Play the 10th fret of the D string with the 2nd finger. Play the 12th fret of the D string with the 4th finger. Play the 9th fret of the G string with the 1st finger. Play the 10th fret of the G string with the 2nd finger. Play the 12th fret of the G string with the 4th finger. Play the 10th fret of the B string with the 1st finger. Play the 12th fret of the B string with the 3rd finger. And finally, play the 13th fret of the B string with the fourth finger. Right, let's do that again, but this time showing my hand on the guitar. Play the eighth fret of the bottom E string with the first finger. Play the tenth fret of the bottom E string with the third finger. Play the twelfth fret of the bottom E string with the 4th finger. Play the 8th fret of the A string with the 1st finger. Play the 10th fret of the A string with the 3rd finger. Play the 12th fret of the A string with the 4th finger. Play the 9th fret of the D string with the 1st finger. Play the 10th fret of the D string with the 2nd finger. Play the 12th fret of the D string with the 4th finger. Play 
the ninth fret of the G string with the first finger. Play the tenth fret of the G string with the second finger. Play the twelfth fret of the G string with the fourth finger. Play the tenth fret of the B string with the first finger. Play the twelfth fret of the B string with the third finger. And finally, play the thirteenth fret of the B string with the fourth finger. And here that is again at 80 beats per minute with a two bar introduction or eight beats. And finally, here that is at a hundred beats per minute with a two bar introduction. I'm just going to explain the very basics of the theory of this scale. And that's because to learn guitar theory properly, you really need to look at it over several lessons. And therefore, this video will be part of several playlists. And I'll put links to those playlists down below in the description. So here's just enough theory to help you understand why you're learning to play the major scale and why it will be useful in the future. Firstly, how the scale's named. And these major scales are named after the first note. So the first note of the G major scale is G, and the first note of the C major scale is C. And what this means is, as long as you know the names of all the notes on the bottom E string, you can move your major scale up and down the guitar to create whichever major scale you desire. So, for example, we've already done a G major scale and a C major scale, but you could also play the A major scale just by starting on the fifth fret. Another bit of basic theory it's worth looking at is why is one a one octave scale and one a two octave scale? And the answer to this can be quite complicated. So I've done an entire video on octaves and I'll put the link to that down below in the description. However, here's the quick answer. And an octave is where the note repeats. So for example, with the one octave G major, we're playing the scale from G third fret on the bottom E string to the G on the D string. And if we were to play the two octave major scale, we'd be playing the G on the bottom E string, then the G on the D string, and continuing on to the G on the top E string. Now, from a scientific point of view, an octave is where the frequency is double or half the original frequency. So if it's an octave up, the frequency is doubled the original frequency, whereas if it was an octave down, the frequency would be half the original frequency. Now, the last basic bit of theory is what makes a major scale a major scale? Because if you think you can play in any position, A, B, C, D, E, etc., and you can have different shapes for the scale, then what makes it a major scale? And the answer to this is the pattern of intervals. And in this case, the interval or an interval is a semitone or one fret. And the pattern of intervals would be two, two, one, two, two, 
two, one. So anywhere on the guitar, or in fact any instrument, you play two semitones, two semitones, a semitone, two semitones, two semitones, two semitones, a semitone, then you're playing a major scale. Now, the final thing I need to mention about major scales is why they're so important. They really are important. They are the DNA of Western music. Now, every single tune you play based on Western music has a major scale at its core, and it's basically the DNA of the tune. Now, you'll notice I say Western music, and that's because some Eastern music uses a different scales at their core and that's why they sound so different. So if you want to understand any chord theory, if you want to understand key signatures or learn how to write music, you have to know the major scale. So it's really worth learning. If you enjoyed this lesson and would like to see more like it, please like, subscribe and hit the bell icon and then you'll be notified when I upload new videos. You'll also find lots of short guitar courses I've already written on my channel in the playlists, and you can also find them at www.ebooksforguitar.com. So, to close, thank you very much for watching.